retro rock plays everything. Hey, Rob here. See, I did that kind of news intro where I look away. And it's like I look over here. That's professionalism, folks. That is the kind of stuff you can expect from this station. After a thousand, I said, that's it. I'm going to get serious here. You can see what a serious man I am about quality around here. Seriously serious. Yeah. This is a haul video. Um, I'm going to have a little rant first, and it's about Goodwill auctions for doing retro stuff. Um, I'm done. I'm, I am done. Unless there's something like really special on there, I'm pretty much done with Goodwill auctions. Uh, I've had a run of bad luck that is insane. Uh, I ordered a few things and I had to order like a second one of them uh, from eBay because they were broken and they weren't described as broken and it's getting annoying. I mean like, um, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm going to do like part of the haul video and then bitch about it, I don't know. But anyway, we'll, we'll start with this. This DS did come from a Goodwill auction. Now, uh, I got it with a bunch of games and the games are fine. So that's great. And uh, one of the games is really interesting. That's why I ordered the lot. But uh, they said that they uh, tested this. They powered it on. All right, fine. They powered it on. It does power up. But uh, the controls don't work. And the touch screen doesn't work. I mean, they work like in one direction. Which is a 90s band, I believe. A 90s boy band. One direction. Totally unrelated. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, sorry about that, it's it's a little bright in here. There we go. Yeah, it's it powers up, but it doesn't actually work or or indeed play anything. That was a great special effect, though, the way it fuzzed out because it didn't get any light. So, uh, yeah, there's number one, a uh, reason why I'm not going to deal with them anymore. But anyway, uh, I did actually get bailed out, which is kind of nice. Uh, Good friend Travis from the podcast. He had a uh, he had a spare DS and he sold me this on the cheap. Like I think it was like twenty five bucks, but uh, it works perfectly. Feels great, and it's actually like new. I mean, it is. It feels and works great. So fine, I've got a DS again. And the reason I wanted a DS, well, why did I want a DS? Because in that lot, I picked up another one of these uh, little DS multi carts. Here, I'll take a picture of these. Yeah, because I don't think you can see them really well. There we go. I'll take pictures of these and put them up. But uh, I got these little DS multi carts, and they're pretty darn cool. Uh, the one is a 260 in one, and the other one's a 67 in one. Uh, one of them works, one of them doesn't. The other one I've had, this one actually I've had for a while, um, and it, it kind of worked on and off again and quit working. Uh, the 67 in one does appear to work, except for uh, Super Mario. New Super Mario Brothers doesn't appear to work on it, which is all okay because I happen to own an R4 DS. Doesn't really matter. I just love the. I collect multi carts. It's just a thing I do. Um, for those of you who are thinking about buying uh, DS multi carts, just freaking don't. They're not worth it. Get something like the R4. Uh, they're cheap. They're like 15, 20 bucks. You put an SD card in it. They're constantly updating these things. Uh, this. These things, they're not constantly updated. Once they quit working because of updates to the DS, they just quit working forever, so they're over with. Also, they're produced very poorly, and they tend to break down of their own accord. So, uh, big recommendation here. Don't don't buy these. They're, they're junk. They're not worth the money. They're not worth any money, but I collect them because I'm weird. Uh, also got iSpy. Not one of the reasons I bought the lot. Uh, Mario Kart DS, a reason why I did buy it. I do love Mario Kart. Um, I say a lot of crap about it on the podcast, I realize. But, uh, you know, like the fact that it's kind of random. But I do love playing it, and I like playing it with family. So, <laughs> eyes. Um, so there's, there is a Mario Kart. Again, I'll zoom these up in that corner over there so you can get a better look at them. Take some nice pictures. Uh, next one is, ooh, I can't even read it. My goodness. My goodness. I can't, I really can't read it. Wait, glasses. 
To the rescue! Plus 20 intelligence. And minus 10 blindness. It is chaotic, Shadow Warriors. Mm. I did a video with my glasses on a while back, and I ended up canceling it because I put the glasses on sideways like this, and it looked like... <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> awesome video. I know you really appreciate these extras, really. <laughs> Sorry for being me. All right, next. SNES pickup, Lion King. Look at that. It is the Lion King. It was $7. I thought that was okay. Lion King is really quite good. Um, the scalpers, you know, the people that just like run from uh, thrift store to thrift store grabbing stuff, they tend, to they tend to not collect this one. A lot of them aren't really collectors. They just grab like SNES games that look like they're popular and then run off and sell them on eBay. But uh, they tend to miss that one, so it's kind of nice to see it every once in a while. Uh, another thing I picked up was a t I picked these up on clearance. I got two of these. This is a Dream Gear. Woohoo! I've done Dream Gears before on my uh, Famiclone show, and uh, I'll be doing this one as well. Uh, the Gamer Portable 220. This is a system that shows up a lot at like Walmarts and things. And uh, I'm kind of surprised to see them there, honestly, because I think they're pretty pirate, but we'll see. I'll take a look at what's on there. Actually, uh, it, it looks like it's part new games, part old NES games. Apparently, they're not really being very careful about uh, about that stuff. All right, so here's another reason why I'm done with uh, Goodwill Auctions. And uh, I bought one of these uh, from Goodwill Auction, and they failed to disclose that uh, the back cover <laughs> wasn't on it. So this one I got off of eBay. Not only did I get it for $5 cheaper, but it also works and has a battery cover. Review forthcoming. Not a surprise, right? I'm very excited about this one. More stuff I got. All right, this is going to have green screen problems. Major ones. Don't worry, I'll take a picture. But uh, Midnight Club 2. Not a huge pickup, but it was only like a couple bucks. So, you know. Just a Midnight Club. Midnight Club action. Quite nice. Uh, I always get Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I'm on a quest to get every copy of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit there is. No, I, and I mean literally. I'm not just you know. I, I'm not just talking here. I'm I'm gonna just have nothing but Need for Speed lined up all over, which is fine because I kind of like the game. <laughs> it's not like it's my favorite. This is fun though. I used to play this with my brother-in-law a bit, and uh, it's fun to play like cops and robbers with it, you know, and try and run each other down. That's pretty great. Good part of the game. We got Medal of Honor Vanguard, which I have not played, so this is like a first for me. Very happy uh, to have picked this up. So uh, I'm kind of excited. I have not played this particular uh, Medal of Honor game. Thought I'd played them all. Star Wars Starfighter, yeah, I'm going to hear some crap about this one, but I love this game. This was one of the first games I really, really liked on the PS2 when I first picked it up, and I got it, like, the first week it came out. Uh, I really enjoy this game. It's I, I like kind of brainless shooters, and it's kind of a brainless shooter, so, you know, what are you going to say about that? Nothing bad. Star Wars Battlefront. These games are so good, aren't they? I loved them on the PSP. I, You know, there's not enough good I can say about these games to this day. They're just fun to play. Even when you're not able to play them online anymore, uh, still even with the bots, it's just a fun experience. Uh, I love like the large-scale battles that it has, uh, the mix with the Star Wars universe. I'm not like a huge, huge Star Wars fan, but I love science fiction in general. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to have this, and it's going to be fun. Oh, this is Battlefront 1. Sorry, Battlefront 2 was the other one I had. I did say Battlefront 2, didn't I? Am I losing it? I might be. Maybe. And look at A GameStop game. <laughs> this is Midnight Club 3, I think. Yeah, dub edition. I just never had it, so I picked it up. I really don't... <laughs> I gotta tell you, I don't think I've played Midnight Club, actually. I think I buy it constantly, meaning to play it someday. 
and then I just never play it. What do you do, right? Oh, what else did I get? Uh, another copy of Super Mario. It was seven dollars. I I probably overpaid on this, but it was like a bad day. This is Super Mario Land. I bought it on like a bad day of hunting. Super Mario Land for the uh, Game Boy. But anyway, yeah, I just was like, ugh. Well, at least I found something. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Yes, I do have more. Um. I, I'm going to show you this and then I'll go to the last thing, which is mildly interesting to you retro aficionados, but only mildly interesting. I didn't pick up anything like Major Mega. It's a PS2! Woo! It's a, I don't have a thick, well, I didn't until now have a thick PS2, and uh, I love playing PS2 games. I had no idea how much I'd love coming back to this system, but I, I think a while ago, I said I'd never get a PS2, then I bought one, uh, then I bought another one, and now I bought the Fatty because I wanted to play PS1 games on it. Uh, so, it was uh, 25 bucks, I think, because I had like $5 off, they wanted 30 for it, it came with two controllers, uh, one was the original, the other one, the other one, I wonder if I'll do a review on this one. <laughs> Look at this thing. Redonkulous. Look at it. It's Mad Cats. What do you expect? But it's got a uh, little light up buttons. I have not even used it. I I refuse to use third party controllers on the PS2, but I might try it for the sake of doing a review on it. It's kind of interesting. Okay, finally. I got this at Goodwill too. Um it's not a huge disappointment. I didn't pay that much for it. I think I paid like I think it was twenty five or thirty wait, I can tell you. I got a sheet of paper that tells me how much I paid for it. I paid twelve dollars for it, and I paid twelve dollars handling, so it was twenty four fifteen. I paid for it, uh, and this is a big haul of Atari twenty six hundred cartridges, and it has some games that I didn't have, but had when I was a kid, like Nexar. And there it is, Nexar. And uh, this is. Uh, this is uh, interesting. It's kind of like, what would it be like, Tempest a little bit? Where you're on the edge and you're shooting things? It's a, it's a pretty fun game, actually. It's by Spectre, Vi Spectre Vision. And I bought a few of their games, and their games were different. They weren't necessarily like the best games ever, but they were different and they were interesting, and I think that scores a few points, doesn't it? In Magic's Trick Shot, it was okay. Actually, it was well-regarded in its day, of course. Obviously, this kind of game is not like a huge collector's item. I'll save the coolest thing for last, I guess. Canyon Bomber. No, it, it doesn't talk. It's, it's Canyon Bomber. You know, the classic bomb some canyons game for the Atari 2600. Uh, Berserk, quite a good version of Berserk. Interesting that it's not... Oh, yeah, it's doing a little bit. thought it would work with the green screen. Kaboom, this one's totally going to green screen out. Yep, there's Kaboom. Nice. Love that game. I already have it, but... Uh, this is... Oh, my goodness. I don't know. 34 telegames. It does not say the game on it. It says something about... Interplanetary ballistic missiles, but... I don't know. It's a Sears version. It's, like, really nasty looking. <laughs> Look at that. That is not like a camera effect. It literally looks like that out in the sun. Maybe they dug these out of the desert. And here's a uh, breakout. Telegames version. Centipede. Unfortunately, no front labels on these. Too bad. This Pac-Man. Respectable version of Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. Still, there's so many better, you know? So many better Pac-Mans. The original Pac-Man, possibly one of the worst games ever. I mean, I don't even know how people can say that E.T. is the worst game when there is this. This game is horrendous. Biggest Christmas disappointment ever. At least I enjoyed playing E.T. a little bit. All right, Defender. I don't have a copy of this. Well, I do now, but I don't have a copy of it. No front label, not collector quality, but I play my games. Star Voyager. This was Imagic's answer to Star Master. It's actually pretty good. 
Not quite as good as Activision Star Master, though, but nothing is. Space Shuttle. I have probably logged over 100 hours in this game. Can't remember how to fly it at all. Too bad. It's, it's got those uh, labels that go all the way to the front, but uh, this one's shrunk or something. Be curious to see if these work at all. Have not tested them yet. I will want to take them down. Here's uh, Missile Command. Which I wonder if that ballistic game is uh, is like a Sears version of Missile Command. I don't think they did that with licensed games, did they? Alright, so there's Missile Command. Great game. We got your Space Invaders. One of the first games for the Atari 2600. And also, by the way, one of the best. Great game. Oh yeah, we got Tanks. This is uh, Combat. 27 telegames. Mousetrap! I uh, never had this one before, but I have played it on the ColecoVision. It's not bad at all. It's a little maze game. Another one of those Pac-Man quote clones. Another copy of Berserk, because one can never have too much Berserk. I'll have to check and see if a friend needs that. Let me know, folks. Frogger! Respectable version of Frogger. Not bad at all. Uh, the Star Pass Supercharger version was better, which I um, I had a Star Pass Supercharger when I was a kid. Uh, but Frogger was a game you almost couldn't get. It was it was always sold out, and I never played it until I was like 30 or something. I mean, just like it was very hard to get uh, retail back in the uh, 80s. Anyway, or early 90s? No, it was it was late 80s, I think when the Star Path Supercharger came out. That was an amazing thing, by the way. If you don't know what a Star Path Supercharger is, they just call it the Supercharger now, because I, I think another company bought them too. It was like Arcadia first, and then it was Star Path. But anyway, uh, the Supercharger basically added uh, added RAM to your, com uh, to your Commodore 64, to your, uh, to your Atari 2600, so it could actually like do decent graphics. And it looked, it, it actually did. It greatly improved the games, and there was a lot of great games for it, but it failed miserably because it was late in the cycle. Oh, it used tapes. That's the other interesting thing. So you, it, it would plug in your cartridge port. I'm going to have to get one, and we'll do a video on it. But you, you plug it in your cartridge port, and then you would run it through a uh, tape player. And the tape player, you know, you press play, and it would, it would play the tape to it, just like, you know, a computer would do at the time. And it would load the game. And then that's how it stored things, so it would have more storage and keep it down in price. Uh, but anyway, the games for it were amazing, and it, it fizzled, unfortunately. But they're, uh, they're real popular now. A lot of people have heard of them now, but they weren't real big in the day. But great thing, anyway. Uh, what is this? Target Fun. I like Target Fun. I, you know, I don't think it gets enough kudos for being the great game that it is. I used to play this with my uncle all the time. I mean, just constantly played that game with my uncle and we loved it and it's a great two-player game anyway you don't hear about it in any big lists so i say that of the great games for the atari 2600 here is uh barnstorming with a big old hole in it just kidding about the hole in effect barnstorming is good my parents bought me it um like as a rainy day thing uh, when I was a kid, and I liked it quite a bit. I, I played it a lot. The graphics were really pretty, and it was an interesting concept that hadn't been tried before. It's, it's pretty fun. It's not, um, it's not one of Activision's best games by any means, but it's quite good. Combat, another great game, which, uh, you know, needs no introduction. Uh, tanks, planes, everything, you know, you go and try and kill your friends. Or the computer. But it's way better with your friends. It's just best with your friends. By the way, some of the first uh, episodes of spawn camping happened in combat. You'd be a spawn camping bastard. That was fun. Okay, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Not a great version of Donkey Kong. The graphics were okay, but unfortunately it's missing levels, which, you know, that never... That was never a good idea. I don't know why they did, like, cheap ports for the Atari 2600 when they could have done so much better, but... I'm going to imagine it was a time constraint or a money constraint or something. Or uh, maybe they just hated Atari. I don't know. But anyway, they a lot of these ports were rushed and they weren't real good. And Donkey Kong's no exception. Also, you know, ColecoVision had their own system, so they had reason to uh, make this version worse. Anyway, Defender again. We already talked about Defender side-scrolling game. Used to have a bunch of a side-scrolling shooter. Used to, well, it's, a, it's the grandfather of side-scrolling shooters. Um, 
had a lot of buttons in the arcade, which was kind of annoying. I always had a hard time controlling it in the arcade, but uh, I liked the home version quite a bit, even though it wasn't like the best. They did make Stargate for the Atari 2600 too. I don't have it, but they didn't make it. There's Pac-Man again. Because one can never have too many Pac-Man. More Pac- Woo. Who wants a Pac-Man? Go on, come on. Message me. <laughs> it's Rob at guysgamesandbeer.net. Say, I want me some Pac-Man. And if I still have one left, I'll send you a Pac-Man. I'm not kidding either. I'll need your address, though. I might show up at your house and like go in your fridge. No, I wouldn't do that. Seriously, you want a Pac-Man? Let me know. And finally, this is my favorite thing. This is kind of the thing that sold a lot to me. It's only like a $10 item, but uh, I've never had one before. Uh, I never had these when they were popular, and uh, so finally I have one. This is a, a Xenox Double Ender, and this is Artillery Duel. Unfortunately, it's like the least of them. Ar Artillery Duel and the rather obtuse Chuck Norris game. Uh, <laughs> Artillery Duel is um, just, you know, it's a, it's a clone of the game Artillery. That It's quite good. Really, uh, Chuck Norris is uh, Super Kicks, and uh, it's it's mm, kind of garbage. It's kind of rubbish. But I've played both, uh, and don't have a lot of respect. But they were sold singly, and I did get these as singles, but I never got it as the double ender. So now I've got my first double ender ever. By the way, uh, I want to hear about your double enders. That totally did not sound good at all. That really... Can I hear about your double ender? But anyway, if you got some of these, uh, let me know what you think of them. <sighs> Double Ender. That's a great way to end a video, I think. I believe that's it. I believe I have done it all. Well, hmm. I feel like there's more. I feel like there's more. It'll end up being like an extra video. But anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more and comment down below. Whew. All right, more videos are coming this week. Of course, uh, XD Live is still grinding its way through. Uh, I'm still doing Pico 8 videos as well. And there's going to be some more indie gaming stuff. I'll see you next time. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos